you doing? Good. All right. So my name is uh, Dr. Dennis Benton. I work at uh, the University of Texas Medical Branch, and when I was, I would probably say 14 or something, I read a book it's called The Blood Stone, and it's about deadly viruses. And I was super fascinated by that. This is 23 years, a long time. And I always wanted to uh, work with these viruses, and you know, 23 years later, I kind of like fulfilled my dream and I, I work with these viruses. So, um, what I want to talk about today is really just how I got to this point working with these viruses and I'll show you a little bit about what we do in Dallas. So, uh, who's been to Dallas? All of you, almost. So I'm sure you, you've, been to, uh, you've been to the beaches in Dallas, right? Yes. You know? yes. So Dallas is down here, and then the University of, of uh, Texas Medical Branch is all the way on the east side of the island. Uh, nobody really, none of the tourists really come to that place. It's really here. You see that the university, here's the beach. And then the, the Galveston uh, National Laboratory here is right in the center of, of the university. And it's one of the, the two places in, in the U.S. We have, the, we have the special laboratory where we protect um, Americans from deadly viruses that could be brought So in, in the Galaxy National Lab, I have my, my own laboratory. I have many different scientists working there. I have my own group. Six uh, students, you know, uh, medical students and PhD students and so on. And we work on, on very bad viruses that are transmitted by ticks. So who knows what it takes? Do you know what it takes? Where do you find things? Oh, on dogs. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So, um, you know, and, and they just live on dogs? Yeah. So what do they do? They try to speak. They try to treat dogs. We work on, on uh, very bad diseases that are transmitted by ticks. So, and these, these viruses that we work with, they, they, uh, we work with them at what we call biosafety level four. So, they have four different security levels, safety levels. I'm going to show you here that the first one is what you would see maybe in a, in a high school uh, biology laboratory, something like that. It's just a room, very simple. You know, people maybe wear gloves or something like that, but that's not really required. And everything that you work with here is not very dangerous. Then we have um, a VSL2 biosafety level two that's right here. It's a typical laboratory. You can wear a lot of Laboratory coat, uh, lab coats here, uh, gloves, and maybe some of you know goggles, and you know that's it. So and the diseases that we work with here, they're not very dangerous, so they're very easy to to, to heal and cure. And so and this is BSL three, biosafety level three. So you know it gets more dangerous and more dangerous. Okay, so the, the diseases that we work with here, for example, West Nile is one of those. Tree, maybe I've heard the name. You see that the people here wear wearing this protective gear, kind of to cause their face so that they don't get anything in their face. They have also these special lab coats here, and then they work in these almost like a, you know, a, a cabinet. And then the biosafety level four, that's where we are, that's the highest level. We're in these spaces. So we have air coming into the you see these yellow holes here that are connected. And um, so the, the whole lab is you, you just walk around with these, with these basically. And so the things that we work with here, there's no, no treatment, there's nothing that you can do when you bring it in. So that's why it has to be dealt with in such a kind of biosafety. Okay, so how did everything start? So you guys probably noticed that I have an accent, right? So where am I from? New York. Yep. Outside of the U.S. No, but close. Europe. Okay. Here. Paris and France. No. Not, not French. What do you think? Uh, that area. What do you think? China. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Germany. Germany is in Europe, right? And um, right in the center of Europe. And then um, I'm from a small town here in the, in the west of Germany. 
work of studies in the uh, town called Hanover. And so what you guys know about Germany and the schnitzel and the sauerkraut and the labels and all that stuff, that's on the south part of Germany. So that's down here and you know, from the north. So that's really different. So that's the veterinary school. I'm the, I'm the veterinary by training. It's the veterinary school that I went to. And it's, um, most of the scientists that I work with, these mad scientists, their training looks like this. You know, they have these test tubes and you know they wear that coat and um, but that's what, what they do. But my training looks a little bit more like this. Better. You know, so you bring work with the animals and that's pretty good to understand what a disease looks like when you really work with, with animals like this. And you know, sometimes it can also look like that. So it gets really bad. That's me, yeah, that's me a long, long time ago. That's me right there. So when, when I was still um, studying, I was still at school, um, I did a, um, an internship in uh, Plum Island. Plum Island is a uh, US, uh, USDA government facility um, in Long Island, off uh, Long Island. And it's on the island most like. And this island has been um, the military meeting was for a long time and then they put uh, uh, a laboratory on here. So because the island has been, um, the, the access to the island has been restricted for a long period of time, over 50 years, people think that there are a lot of crazy things going on on the island. So they actually full straight into all this. On the island, it's, a, it's kind of like a further, you know, spy, spy book and People that say that you know, crazy creatures are being produced here on the island. But when I when I work there, we none of that stuff is really going on. So this is all fiction. Um, so we really learned that's what was really the first time for me that I learned to work with viruses. And I went back to Germany and I worked on an animal disease called classical swine fever. And the disease basically looks like Ebola, but it's only in swamp. So it's a disease specifically um, for, uh, you know, they just eat swine, and they, you know, they have these lead agents and all that stuff. So that's where I got my doctorate on. And then science, um, you always have to travel a lot. You know, science is very international. You have to live in different countries. And, uh, to, to get a better education. So my, my first time after I finished my my um, my doctorate, I went to San Antonio. Who's been to San Antonio? San Antonio, right? Sure. So that's a place in San Antonio told me called Texas Biomedical Research Institute. And um, so a lot of you have been to San Antonio, but do you know that San Antonio also has a place where they keep monkeys? Do you know that they keep over 6,000 monkeys in San Antonio? Probably not, right? You know that. So um, there's a place in San Antonio where they have these monkeys, and they use these monkeys to um, find out about diseases and how you can cure human diseases with these monkeys. And, um, so I worked on diseases that are transmitted by, by mosquitoes back then, and that's also when, when I started working in this, in this uh, space suit laboratory you know, these deadly viruses. And then, after a few years, I went back up all the way north to Winnipeg in Canada. Um, and a few years in Winnipeg, and Winnipeg is a super cold city. It's one of the coldest cities in, in the world because you have all the cold fronts coming in from, from the Arctic. Um, so eight months out of the year, the city looks like this. So the total opposite of this one. And in Winnipeg, the Canadian government, so it's you know, Canada as a country, um, they have a, a laboratory um, like the Galveston lab as well, um, where I worked at the state of the lab. One of the, uh, the perks things is I, I got to meet the, uh, the Canadian uh, Prime Minister, which is like the president of Canada. So um, it's, it's pretty cool being in science. You get a lot of interesting things. So when I was, when I was in, in Canada, I started working on a disease called Crimean 
we talk about ticks, you know, and dogs and cats, and you know, ticks typically here when you walk the dog, and I think it was you who said, you know, you can find them on trees, right? So ticks typically they um, they sit in the grass or in the trees or something like that, and they just wait for you to walk on, right, with a dog or a cat. And then so they sit there and they just wait. And then they can sense that you're walking by and then they just smash on you. And then they just you know, crawl on you and stuff like that. So we call this an ambush tick. The different ticks in different parts of the world they have a different strategy for the hunting ticks. So and these hunting ticks that we're trying to find, um, there's a video of this. Um, they are in these, in these countries where we find this disease that I, I work on. So here's a video of one of those, uh, the, the work that we did. You see that the tick, almost like a spider, is very fast, super quick, and the, the tick can sense you where you are. And within seconds, the tick is on you. So this is a co-worker of mine, a solid piece of tick is on there. Seconds. Those ticks, when they bite you, that's when they transmit the disease. When they, they spit into you and then they get the disease from those ticks. Super quick. So those, those are called hunting ticks. Is it funny? Can you bite again? No, not at this point. So they always take a little while to bite, but they get on you very quick. So that's, that's, um, so what we did. <coughs> Some of those tips, we ship them, we ship them back to to Gals and he's the building that I work in. And this is me in one of those space suits that I was talking about, those protective suits. And here um, we see the tick right there, right? The tick. So that's how we're, we're doing we're trying to find out um, what these um, what what the ticks are doing and how they how they are transmitting. This is just to give you an idea that ticks have different sizes. Dying right there, so they are small and big, depending on like what kind of tick it is. So some of them are super, super, super tiny. You need to basically you know, see them. So if we want to work with these very small ticks, um, you have to make sure that they're not crawling around. Right? They're not crawling in our rooms, in our laboratories. So we have to make sure that they stay in place. So what we do is we we make these little capsules, we take these plastic containers, and then we, we get, use animals because we don't want to work with humans, right? We don't want to make humans sick, right? So we want to use animals to, to study what's going on. So we share the mouse, we glue these capsules on, that's what they look like, and then we put these ticks in, in these capsules, and we screw the lid on, and they will stay in there, and they're not crawling around. They will so this is what a tick looks like when it's fully engorged. So engorged meaning that you know the tick will suck up blood, get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So sometimes they get a hundred times bigger than they are. That's this their survival trick. They suck blood from from a host and then they um, mix the blood. Sorry. Um, in a way, it is like a bed. Yeah. So they, they suck your blood over days, and, and they use your, your blood to survive. So um, what we work on, this is a cartoon of the, of the tick. We just you know, cut it in half, so this is what the inside of the tick looks like. And my laboratory is trying to find out how these diseases are. This is a human, right? This is a human skin, so this would be my arm, for example. I'll see ticks on that day. It's very small, this is just an arch. Um, how the, the virus is being transmitted. So it's being carried from a tick to a human. The, what a tick does, it will suck blood, and then it will pause for a second, and then it will spit back into the skin. And then it will suck, suck more. So, um, the virus is actually, the disease is actually in, in the spit of the tick. So it sucks blood and then it will spit back into the skin, into your skin, and that's when the disease gets into your body. Does that answer your question?